Hi, Diana. Welcome to Into the Multiverse. Glad to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I love the name of your show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, it was actually not our idea. It was our boss's idea. <laughs> it was uh, when we were uh, invited to come work work here. He had the idea for a show and said that this is going to be your show. And it originally was just going to be with Josh, but um, certain turn events that I came on the show as well. <laughs> um, well, it was it was well named. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay. Well. For those who are not familiar with you or your work, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your YouTube channel, uh, how you got started, and why you picked the field of science that you are in now? Yes. So um, my name is Diana. Um, I'm better known on the internet as Physics Girl. I'm slowly losing my identity to that name. Um, but I run a YouTube channel with PBS Digital Studios called Physics Girl. It's all about physics. It's kind of fun experiments, like little things you can do at home, but then like just questions about the universe that I have, like what can, can a black hole evaporate or, you know, crazy things like that actually happen. Um, and uh, I chose science just because it is the, it's like the curiosity. Uh, it's like, it really is the curiosity field. Like it's whatever question you have, science likes to go and find the answer whether it's biology, you know, looking deep inside the human body or physics, which is my, my personal choice, you know, ask questions about the entire universe. So that's why I like science. Awesome. Amazing. Um, in one of your videos, you describe a way to do ad advanced mathematics in a simplistic way. Can you explain the method and tell us the inspiration behind it? Okay. So yeah, that, yeah, that one was a lot of fun. Um, so, the math tricks video was video trying to kind of take all these little um, daily math things that you have to do, make them a little bit easier. So one is tipping um, for, for the, there's five different tricks, but that was just one of them for the tips. Um, I really, I like to take the amount that you have, say it's $20. And then for every 10 that you have to pay, you think, you know, 20% would be about $2 mm -hmm. for every, every one of those tens. So $20 would be, Two, four. So $4 is your tip. That's how I think about tipping. And then I went through a couple of different math tricks like that, like multiplying nines using your fingers and why you do that and multiplying 11, all kinds of little simple tricks to make math easier. That was actually, that was a unique video. I don't usually do math videos. And that was kind of a, it wasn't like a, a type of math you'd usually use in physics, but it was fun math tricks that I like to think about. Yeah, yeah, we thought so too. We thought it was really fascinating, and um, I th was thinking about bringing that up on you know when we did our interview with you. Um, very cool, very very exciting, and I think it's really important to get people excited about physics and math, and even helps the younger crowd in a way. Uh, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. people <laughs> struggling with math. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. Uh, yeah, and uh, and we physics, really appreciate physics that. Physics uses a lot of math. I think that I think that's one of the things that that makes people say, oh, "I was so bad at physics. I hated physics," which I hate to hear because physics for me is it's it's like fun and exciting. Um, but I think a lot of it comes from from math and like not feeling completely comfortable with the math that you have to use for physics. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, in our show, we've talked a lot about uh, antimatter, but you discuss anti-bubbles. What is an anti-bubble? <laughs> I do. Um, uh, you know, anti-bubbles have a, a really exciting name for a kind of uh, humdrum everyday phenomenon, although I think it is still pretty cool. Um, you know, anti-matter is this sort of elusive matter that is, is not very common, and um, anti-bubbles are Okay, so a bubble is like a shell of liquid with air inside and air on the outside. An anti-bubble is the opposite. So it's a shell of air with liquid in the middle and liquid on the outside. So you actually make them every time you turn on a water faucet. You'll get these little, you, these little shells of air inside the liquid as it's moving around. And they don't last very long. So, so they're not, people don't know that they exist as much. But uh, if you put a little soap in some water and then you water onto the surface of that soapy mixture, you can get antibubbles to form and kind of float in the middle of the liquid. It's fascinating. Oh, wow. That is cool. That's very cool. 
<laughs> what are your thoughts yeah, about that's a fun it? Little, sorry. Oh, fun no, no, go ahead. Go ahead and finish. Yeah, that is fun. That's awesome. Uh, what are your thoughts about if the universe is infinite or finite? Is there an end to the universe? And if so, what is behind it or beyond it? <laughs> I love this question. I love thinking about questions like this because they're, they're, they're unanswerable as far as we know right now because we, we can only see to, you know, the edge of our, what we call, um, visible universe. Um, but so if we look out at the universe, we see everything's kind of homogenous. Like it looks kind of the same all over the place, right? So that indicates that beyond what we can see, it probably keeps on going and it's the same and it's homogenous for forever. Like why would there be an end to it? But then again, like that to me, like it breaks my brain to think about an unending universe where there's an inf like infinite energy. It just keeps going on into infinity. It's infinite distance wide it's i mean that's like i feel like that's the point when you can't imagine the universe anymore it's already big enough but the thinking in infinite is unbelievable i don't know i i don't know how to answer that question but i think it's really interesting to think about i do too i know as a young girl i've always loved physics and science and mathematics everything about it uh looking up at the sky at night just trying to picture what is beyond all of it <laughs> and yeah. i understand it it mm -hmm. does it hurts my brain to think about like how w what else is out there and why is it there <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you think about the fact that we've only really you know we've only really studied stars and recently planets within our own um, with our own galaxy. We haven't looked at galaxies beyond ours. We've seen them, you know, as uh, we've seen some individual stars, but we haven't really studied them in, in detail because they're so far away. And that's just one of billions of galaxies. So it's, it's, it's enormous. And that's just our visible universe. Oh, I know. I know. And I always thought it was fascinating. You're able to see the galaxy Andromeda, you know, for, for, mm -hmm. with the naked eye. I always thought that was so cool. And uh, yeah. I just, yeah. oh my goodness, getting on the cosmology of everything <laughs> and the cosmology side of everything, mm -hmm. I could just talk forever about it. That's, that's my favorite <laughs> part of physics. Uh, um, perhaps the ultimate question of all time comes from a video you did on quantum mechanics and Max Planck or Planck, I'm sorry, Max Planck, our <laughs> favorite physicist. <laughs> how does reality actually work versus how many, pe how many people might think it works? Yeah, so, oh man. Um, so the universe, uh, you know, we, what we, do we, let me start again. When we do physics, we like to, we like to talk about the really, really, really big. And we like to talk about the really, really, really small. And, um, when you talk about the really, the really large, massive objects like black holes, you have to start talking about um, a rel special relativity and general relativity, which were Einstein theories back in the early 1900s. Um, and then when you talk about the really small, you have to talk about quantum mechanics. So you have to talk about the weird behaviors that that some like really, really small particles like electrons and protons and all those fundamental particles that um, Protons are a fundamental particle, but the small particles that we're made up of, um, they have weird quantum behaviors um, and they act differently than everyday objects. Like they have a probability of being somewhere, but they may or may not be there depending on whether whether you measure it. There's like a, a like position is not really a thing anymore when you get down to the smallest particles. It's, it's like a probability of position. So, um, so quantum mechanics um, really, it looks into the small things and it kind of reveals a world that acts differently from what we're used to, but really is, you know, that's the fundamentals of what, what we're all made of, all the matter that we're comprised of. That's so fascinating. And I love the prob probability cloud analogy that you give. And that always, I always think mm -hmm. of quantum tunneling when you think, when you say yeah. that, yeah. I love it. That's one of my favorite subjects and favorite topics to talk about is quantum tun tunneling. It's just, that's how the sun shines. It's just, it, that's it. 
it's not supposed to be able to happen, but it happens. <laughs> it works. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's so interesting when you first when you're taking quantum mechanics for the first time and you're learning about all these behaviors that small particles have, like the fact that okay, say there's a barrier here and a particle is on one side, it can just jump across to the other side, like like going through a wall. Um, when you first hear about that, like your your imagination goes wild and you think about, you know, like being able to walk through walls and things like that. But of course, these things happen at an incredibly small scale. So even though they're weird by our everyday standards, they happen at those those tiny, tiny, tiny scales. But we've mm -hmm. been able to measure them and, and verify that this is real. This is how the world works. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Things that wouldn't seem possible are very possible. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say to people who are interested in physics, but who many, they may feel uh, and in, intimidated by it? I, I would say that physics sort, physics sort of has something for everybody. Um, I, you know, I don't think that everyone has to become a physicist. I don't think everyone has to memorize all the equations of physics and be able to apply Newton's laws and, um, and, and recognize, like, equations for general relativity. Um, but physics, you know, physics does describe how our everyday world works. And it describes, you know, the interactions of planets and why orbiting happens, like why our Earth goes around the sun. And so I would say that, like, any of those questions that you had when you were a kid, those are answered by physics. And if you if you kind of keep up that curiosity that you had when you were younger, keep asking those questions, eventually you're going to get to physics. You're going to get to physics answering some of those fundamental questions. Well, what are your thoughts on dark matter and uh, dark energy? What do you think it is? Oh, I have no clue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, okay, so we know that we know that dark matter and dark energy exist. They're kind of these mysterious substances. We're not sure what they are. Um, we know that, um, that, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting the numbers. We know that only 4% of the matter and energy in our universe is, is like baryons and um, all the matter that make us up. So everything we interact with every day, that's only 4% of the matter and energy in the universe. The rest of it comes from dark matter and dark energy. So um, dark energy, we, we kind of understand as this force that is pushing the expansion of space, like the expansion of, of the universe. Um, and, and we've learned recently causing that expansion to accelerate. So, you know, gravity pulls everything together. And then there's this mysterious substance or whatever it is called um, dark energy that's causing things to be pushed apart. It's kind of a weird um, repulsive force. So we don't know exactly what that is. Like maybe, maybe it is a, uh, a you know, a, a mathematical term left out of some of the equations, but, but we don't, we don't think that that's likely. We think it's actually some extra substance, something else that we don't know um, any details about yet. And then as far as dark matter, we think it might be some kind of particle, like maybe a, like it doesn't interact very much. It's kind of massive and it's, it's a, um, they like to call it wimps, which are weakly interact massive particles. Um, that's the leading theory for what dark matter is. But um, but we still don't, you know, we've never directly detected dark matter. We have only indirectly inferred that it exists. So it's really exciting that there's this, you know, there's this mystery in physics. Like it's, it is discovering and detecting dark matter would be one of the biggest accomplishments of the century. It would be incredible to figure out what dark matter and dark energy are. So I have no idea what they are, but, um, but for the physicists that do eventually figure it out, I think it's going to be an, an incredibly exciting moment. I've lately been thinking a lot about, um, about artificial gravity. I've been thinking about um, space travel and Mars and uh, black, black holes and, you know, all those kinds of things. Black a holes are stuff. amazing. Yeah, a black holes are an amazing thing. I I often wonder what they are, what causes them. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think they might be? Yeah, I, well, so uh, what we understand about black holes is that they are, um, you, you know, they're so massive that 
uh, and so dense that nothing can escape. No matter, no light. They're sort of the, the point of no return, you know, um, this is what they call the event horizon around the black hole. So they're, they're these incredibly dense, massive objects. Um, and, you know, just, just like some of the other things we talked about, like dark matter and dark energy, we've never directly detected a black hole. Like we've never, you can't see a black hole because no light can get out of it and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't reflect light, but we've, we've seen its effects. Like we've seen light bend around black holes. We've seen some of the x-ray jets um, caused by black holes. We've seen the effects, you know, we've seen things orbiting black holes even. Um, we know that at the center of most galaxies is a super massive black hole, which is really cool to think about. Um, but but uh, something interesting about black holes recently is that we we just in the last couple of years for the first time detected gravitational waves, which is like a, a ripple in space. There's actually you know the stretching and bending of space and and time space time we like to call it. Um, and we we uh, we detected this because two giant black holes collided and merged into one, which would be an incredible thing to see, but we kind of did see it in that we, we sensed the gravitational wave that came out from that. Um, and so black holes are so massive. They kind of bend and warp space time in a big way enough that when a collision like that happens, it, it releases a wave through space that we can detect, which is pretty cool. That's so awesome. That's really awesome. And where can people find out more about you and your videos? My so my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash physics girl. Um, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, you know, all the Instagram, all the social media stuff that the kids do nowadays. Uh, <laughs> but it's all it's under physics girl. So um, if you Google physics girl, it's all, it all pops up. That's awesome. Diana, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here with us today. Um, this interview has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of good out of it. Um, and thank you so thank you thank you for all the physics questions every time I do interviews it's like you know what's it like to YouTube I'm like no no no, no. I want to talk about physics <laughs> so that was great thank you well, we are a science and physics show so <laughs> that's what we like to focus on <laughs> fantastic uh, it's I been approve. awesome oh good well I'm glad <laughs> it's been absolutely phenomenal having you here and thank you again so much I appreciate it thank you